So faith is the victory, 308? Yes. All right, and then we'll pray. So let's go ahead and pray and uh, ask the Lord to bless these requests. And then uh, we'll sing and get to our lesson this morning. Thank you once again for being here. Thanks for the wonderful breakfast. What a blessing that is to, to rely on, even on a, especially on this rainy day, having some warm biscuits and gravy. It's pretty beautiful stuff. So let's praise the Lord and ask Him to bless these requests and to bless our time this morning. God, we love you. We're so thankful for your love for us. Lord, how your love changes our hearts and our lives. Lord, as I was reading the Word of God this morning, Lord, the Bible says that, uh, Lord, we are to love. Love one another, and through our love, the world. The Lord just reminds me of how love is the most powerful force on this planet. And God, your love has changed our lives, and your love is the reason that we're here this morning. Lord, help us, Father God, in our lives to love you and to love others more. Lord, especially to love those who are difficult, especially if we've been in. Lord, do pray for these requests this morning. Lord, I trust you continue to be with me. Um, Carol's uh, niece, Tammy, for the team of healing and for her request, uh, Lord, for Bonnie's request this morning, for Joe and Lola and Holly, Lord, just praying that you'll heal this lady, uh, Lord, for the boys, for their housing, Lord, and for uh, Charity's request for Beth Cologne, Lord, I pray for the Obaldos and for their health, and Lord, she's asked us to pray for those that are, uh, Lord, traveling and those that are, uh, Lord, faced with flooding, Lord, I pray that you just be with them through this difficult time. Lord, do you think of Cindy and for Sandy as they're not feeling good this morning? Lord, would you touch them right now? Just give them peace in their heart. Strengthen them, Lord, I pray that they feel even better very quickly and soon. Lord, we do pray you just continue to be with um, Ben for his health and for healing. And for Vita asks us to pray for her grandson, Adrian. Lord, this is diabetes. That, Lord, you would touch his body and strengthen him. And for Susie, God, as she's planning on doing some traveling, would you keep her safe and just put your arms around her and, Lord, Lord, be with her as she's traveling, be with her car, and safety as well. Lord, just bless this time as we study your word. Lord, may encourage our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. 308, we'll sing first, second, and fourth verse. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I, I wanted to say thank you for every Sunday cooking a, cooking a good breakfast for us. Oh, for, for, for the sausage? Every, no, just cooking I, it, oh. preparing it, doing it for us. My pleasure. Thank and you, I guys. I have to go in there and do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. you. <laughs> All right. Three or four, eight. Faith is a big
praise the Lord for the faith in the Lord, the faith that changes our lives, saved our souls from sin. So let's go ahead and get into our Bible study. If you have your Bibles, open them up, turn to the book of Daniel. We're in Daniel chapter 3 as we get into the story. Uh, we started the story last week. Uh, three Hebrew children and the uh, idol, the image that um, King Nebuchadnezzar built. So last week we talked about the king's decree and uh, the uh, decree in Daniel chapter 3 verses 1 through 7 says Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set up the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered to the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast in the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and languages fell down, and worship the golden image. And we've learned this story before in Sunday school. Many of us understand the story. Uh, they said to bow down. We understood, as we're going to learn today. Uh, there were three Hebrew children who uh, delightfully declined this uh, decree. And so uh, last week we told you that this is uh, helping us in our lives understand that we understand government mandates. We're familiar with those. Except this punishment was death. You don't do what the government says, they're going to kill you. All right, that was a harsh decree, and Nebuchadnezzar was known for those. We found in uh, chapter 2, he said he was going to kill all the magicians and astrologers because they couldn't interpret his dream, or couldn't even read, remind him of his dream and interpret it. And I told you guys last week this statement. I wanted to clarify it, lest you guys, uh, once again, feel like I am uh, you know, somebody that you will not listen to. I said this statement last week. Praise God that we have Joe Biden as our ruler. And I wanted to just clarify, I did not vote for Joe Biden. I am not going to vote for Joe Biden. I am not a Democrat. I do not in, in, uh, uh, identify with those policies at all. Okay, I'm not a Republican either. Uh, both sides, in my opinion, have uh, differences from the Bible. I believe the Bible, and that's the, uh, what I go with when it comes to politics. But I wanted to remind us with this statement, folks, simply this. We are blessed to have America, uh, that a country we live in. And uh, we don't have the government mandating us and saying, do as we say or we're going to kill you. Uh, we do not live in that country. We live in a country uh, that is free. And uh, for the most part, we can do as we please. And uh, we are blessed. And I hope and pray that you guys will praise God, even in your heart. We don't agree with him, but we pray for him. We're praising God that we have the government that God has given us and that he is our ruler. So into our story this week. So last week was the um, king's decree. And this week as we go on in chapter 8, verses 19, chapter 8, verses 8 through 19. So therefore, wherefore that certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews, they spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that hear the sound of the corn, of the flute, the harp, the sack, the psaltery, and the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down, worship it, that he should be cast in the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded, Bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought them in before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do you not serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if you be ready at that time, when you hear the sound of the corner, the flute, the harp, the sack, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, that you fall down and worship the image which I have made. But if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fire furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful. Meaning we're, we're, we're going to be respectful here. 
to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times more than it was to be heated. And so here's the story here. Last week, king says, Thou, the day, the kind decline of these folks. They were respectful, but they were firm in the fact that, hey, look, we're not going to participate in that kind of behavior. We have a confrontation between believers and non-believers. The non-believers wanted the believers to act like them. The believers respectfully declined to participate in the idol worship. And part of what we're going to be talking about in the main service this morning is the idea of mixing culture. We have convictions and we have teachings as Christians that we're not to do this. And the culture, the world, those that are not believers, they have their um, opinions and their thoughts. And the church, some churches, are wanting to combine those. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says, no, we're not going to combine what is wrong with what is right. Because if we allow what's wrong into our worship, we are wrong in all of it. And they were respectfully declining the fact that they were not going to allow the culture and the pressure from the world to change them from disobeying God. It was very difficult to decline the king's order, but for these three men, it was harder to decline the Lord's word. We're either going to listen to what the king says, or we're going to listen to what God says. And they said it's harder to do go against God than it is to go against the king. And so the Bible says, they knew this verse in Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 through 5, Thou shalt not, God says, thou shalt not have into thee any graven image or likeness thereof, anything that is in heaven or above, or there is earth beneath, or there is in the water under thy earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the Father upon the children of the third and fourth generation to them that hate me. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew this was God's word. And when the king said, Thou, they said, Who do we obey? Do we obey God or do we obey the king? The king's going to kill us, but God could condemn us. God could condemn us to hell for eternity. The king, he could just torture us for a little bit and then we're in heaven with God. Or we could disobey God and we could have a little bit of pleasure on this earth and be eternally tormented forever. I know I'm not trying to say that disobedience leads you to hell. But it's a small road down to the fact that you don't have the faith. I promise you that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not the only Jews in that crowd. And all of those other Jews that bowed really did not have faith in their God. But these men said, we have faith that God is real and that God's word is true and we're going to obey God's word. And so very quickly in the next five minutes, I want to give us two lessons to learn from the, the kind decline of these dedicated followers of God. To help us be more dedicated to our God. Folks, these young men, what it could have been young men, could have been older men, we don't know. Middle age, whatever. They were truly dedicated to God. And I hope and I pray that we too will be dedicated to God to say, I would rather die than disobey him. I'd rather be cast out of the group. I'd rather be people scorning me than disobey God. Folks, you know, this, this last week I was working. And there were some folks that are church-going folks, not from our church, but another church. And they're posting church things on their Facebook pages and profess to be Christians. But as they were in that back room talking, the things that were coming out of their mouth were not pleasing to God. They were talking bad about people. They were talking bad about stuff. They were using filthy, nasty language. It was disrespectful to God. Now, I don't think this lady would speak like this when she was at church. But she was speaking like that around her friend and her friend's friends. My heart just sunk to think, you know, how a different person is when they're away from church. Folks, these people were in the pit of hell and they still stood for God. We're not going to bow, Nebuchadnezzar. We're not going to use that nasty language. We're not going to bow down to that. We're not going to go in that direction. We are dedicated to God. Folks, it's my desire, it's my prayer, folks, that you too would have a desire and a heart to say, I'm not going to bow to Satan. I'm not going to give in to his wickedness. I'm going to do what's right 
matter when it's the popular thing to do or when it's the unpopular thing to do. Whether I'm at church, I'm going to speak sweetly, or whether I'm in a back room where nobody else is around, where they don't think anybody else can hear me, I'm going to speak sweetly and kindly and lovingly. When I'm on Facebook and something doesn't go my way, I'm not going to la, 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 on Facebook. Okay? How awful it is that someone would post something praising to God, and then the next thing they're going to post is going to be displeasing to God and backbiting and harsh. Folks, that's not how a Christian is to behave. And so first thing I want us to understand is kindness has a chance of changing people's lives while being coarse and cocky only makes us feel better about our lives. Folks, kindness, love, as I told you in my prayer and as I was reading my Bible this morning, love has the potential to change people. But when we feel like I'm right and everybody else is wrong and I get cocky and, and I get coarse about my behavior, we're the only ones that feel good about ourselves. That's not going to change people's hearts and lives. Folks, when you're around your lost friends and they see you act lost and they see you talk lost and they see you do things that are like lost people, it doesn't convince their heart that there's anything different about you. These three men decided we're going to show the world that we're different and that we're dedicated to God. And their testimony, folks, as we're going to see next week, impacted the king where the king said, your God is the great God. Folks, we have to understand that kindness and love and generosity is what's going to change people in our world. We must be kind, loving people. When, we, when the world asks us to bow, we don't be rude. We don't say how bad they are and how good we are. Look at how evil the world is and how good I am. No, we say, look, kindly, I'm not going to do that because I, I, it goes against what God wants me to do. Kindness has a chance. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 20 and 23, says, For what glory is it if we be buffeted for your faults? Ye shall take it patiently. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye shall take it patiently, for this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in him. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not but committed to himself that judgeth righteously. Jesus, when he was on the cross, instead of getting mad, instead of getting frustrated, what did he say? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus was reviled, Jesus was rebuked, and he kept his mouth closed. Folks, I hope and pray that that will be our testimony with those around us. Secondly, the thing we can learn from this very quickly is knowledge of God's word is the key to keeping yourself from kneeling to Satan. The knowledge of God's word is the key to keeping yourself from kneeling to Satan. Folks, you're not going to be tempted this week to bow down to an image. Mr. Biden is not going to come on to the, the, the TVs and say, Everybody in America, I need you to bow down to me right now. Okay, that's not going to happen. But what is going to happen is Satan is going to do something to you to tempt you to bow down to him. He's going to tempt you some way to show, to get your heart, to prove that you don't love God like you're supposed to. But folks, as Psalm 119, verses 10, 11 says, With my whole heart, God, have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I what? Might not sin against thee. 2 Timothy 2, 5 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Folks, Satan is going to get into your heart. He's going to get into your life this week. He's going to try and get you to bow down, just like Nebuchadnezzar, one of the three Hebrew children, bow down. And we have to know God's word so that when the time comes, we say, no, Satan, I will not bow. I will not bend. I want to be loyal to God. I want to be loyal to his word. I want to live in the spirit. I want to have a testimony that pleases God. I will not bow. Folks, the only way we're going to know what God wants us to do is if we study and read his word. Folks, I hope and pray this week that we will be diligent, determined to honor God. When the temptations come, when our friends start talking bad about us, we will respectfully decline to say, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to remove myself from the situation because I'm not going to speak ill of anybody. Because that's not what my God wants me to do. My God wants me to speak kindness and gentleness and truth and love. And folks, we have to know what God's word says. The Bible says what? Hide it in your heart so that I might not sin against thee. We want, if we want to avoid, avoid embarrassing ourselves before God this week, 
We must educate ourselves in God's word. We want to avoid embarrassing God. Oh God, did you see me do that? Yeah, I saw that. Sorry. We want to avoid that embarrassing feeling. We must educate ourselves and memorize it and apply it to our hearts and our lives. Satan will tempt you this week. May you have the tenacity to obey God. The tenacity, the courage, the strength, the vigor, the desire, the heart, the determination to say, Satan, you're not going to win today. Satan, I'm not going to go there. Satan, I'm not going to go on that website. Satan, I'm not going to text that person. Satan, I'm not going to post that on Facebook. Satan, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to determine in my heart that I'm going to be tenacious about honoring and trusting God. Folks, God will bless you. And maybe, just maybe in your life, you might get to win someone to Jesus Christ as the week as they see your godly testimony before them. Don't bow to Satan this week. Once again, for them, it was an image. They said, we will not bow. For you, it's not going to be an image. You know how Satan's going to tempt you this week. He's going to try to get you to bow, just like the whole world bows. And folks, you're going to feel by yourself, but you're not. You have a whole church family here to support you, to encourage you, to lift you up, to help you. And I hope and pray and plead, folks, this week that we will trust the Lord. We will honor and glorify Him. And we'll study His Word. And we'll memorize His Word. And we'll put godly music on the radio that will continue to encourage and lift up our spirit so that we can be brave and we can be bold. And folks, if you fall this week, guess what? God will lift you up. He'll forgive you. And you can come back and get encouragement and encouragement. That's why we have a Sunday night service and a Wednesday night service to continue to refresh and encourage and strengthen our hearts and our love for God. And I pray that the Word of God will have an impact in your week this week. Let's pray. God, thank you for the chance to study your word. Lord, thank you so much for the testimony and the tenacity of the three Hebrew children who would not bow to Satan. They said no. And God, as we're going to learn next week how you blessed that, that decision. And Lord, I pray that you help the folks this week to be tenacious. And Lord, they'll be true to you. And they'll avoid the temptation of Satan, God, and you would give them victory. Lord, I pray that their testimony, Lord, their love, their generosity, their, their uh, holy lives, God, will be a, a, a light to those around them. And Lord, that will draw all men closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> all right, we'll go ahead and have our morning service here in about five to ten minutes. Feel free to get you guys some coffee or some breakfast or whatever, and we'll be in the main service here in just about five to ten minutes. No, they're not mentioned anymore after this. That's correct. But uh, we don't we don't know. The book's called Daniel, so it's not called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So, but that's that his story there is quite the encouragement. Their story. Yeah, I'm looking at that. Is that what you have to say? Oh, yeah.